The unexpected announcement of Joe Biden dropping out of the 2024 presidential race has sent ripples across the globe. While Russia, China, and the Global South might have anticipated such a move, the G7 nations, firmly rooted in the old U.S.-led playbook, find themselves reeling. As the U.S. potentially pivots towards protectionism under Trump, traditional allies like Canada and the U.K. are strategically reconsidering their positions. Historically, Canada and the U.S. have maintained a robust trade relationship, with the U.S. being Canada's largest trading partner. However, Trump's protectionist policies, exemplified by his proposed 10% universal tariff on all imports, pose a significant threat to this relationship. Canada's exports to the U.S., particularly in sectors like oil, commodities, and manufacturing, could be severely impacted. In a bold move, Canadian Foreign Minister Melanie Jolie made an unannounced visit to Beijing, seeking to reset relations with China. This visit marks the first high-level engagement between the two nations in seven years, highlighting the urgency of securing alternative economic partnerships. Trade data supports this strategic shift. Bilateral merchandise trade between Canada and China has seen a notable increase, with Canadian exports to China rising by 6.2% to approximately $30.5 billion. This growth underscores the potential for a deeper economic partnership, despite the geopolitical tensions and talk of decoupling. Canada's pivot towards China is driven by pragmatic economic considerations. With Trump's tariffs threatening to disrupt trade with the U.S., Canada is keen to secure alternative markets for its goods. The potential impact of U.S. tariffs on Canadian exports could be devastating, potentially reducing GDP and leading to job losses. Canada and the U.S. have navigated trade tensions before. The 2018 to 2019 May trade war, sparked by Trump's tariffs on Canadian steel and aluminum, saw Canada retaliate with its own set of import taxes. This historical precedent underscores the need for Canada to hedge its bets and diversify its trade relationships. Despite the reset with China, Canada's stance remains conflicted. Finance Minister Christian Freeland has hinted at trade actions against China, particularly concerning Chinese overcapacity and electric vehicles. This reflects an ongoing adherence to U.S. economic ideology, which could undermine Canada's efforts to strengthen ties with China. Post-Brexit, the UK has sought to redefine its economic relationships. The potential return of Trump's protectionist policies poses a significant challenge, particularly given the UK's close economic ties with the US. In a strategic departure from the EU, the UK under Keir Starmer has decided not to impose high tariffs on Chinese EV imports. This decision reflects a pragmatic approach aimed at fostering economic growth and attracting Chinese investments. The UK's auto industry is experiencing a resurgence, with new car manufacturing up by 177% in 2023. By welcoming Chinese EVs, the UK aims to provide more consumer choices and lower costs, leveraging China's manufacturing prowess to support its green transition. The UK's decision to open its auto industry to Chinese EVs offers several strategic benefits. It allows the UK to attract Chinese investments and technology, supporting its goal of reindustrialization. Additionally, by avoiding a trade war with China, the UK can maintain stable economic relations and benefit from the global shift towards zero emission vehicles. The UK's green mandates, aiming for 80% of new cars to be zero emission by 2030 and 100% by 2035, align with China's leadership in the EV market. By integrating Chinese EVs into the market, the UK can accelerate its green transition and meet its environmental goals. Both Canada and the UK face the challenge of balancing geopolitical considerations with economic pragmatism. While fostering closer ties with China offers economic benefits, it also requires navigating complex geopolitical dynamics. Domestic political pressures and international alliances add layers of complexity to these strategic shifts. For Canada, aligning with China might provoke backlash from US allies and internal stakeholders. For the UK, diverging from the EU's trade policies requires careful diplomatic navigation to avoid potential economic repercussions. Chinese investments play a critical role in the strategic calculations of both Canada and the UK. For Canada, securing Chinese markets for its exports offers a buffer against potential US tariffs. For the UK, attracting Chinese investments supports its reindustrialization efforts and green transition.
The future of these strategic ships will depend on the unfolding political dynamics in the US and the responses of global powers like China, Canada and the UK's ability to balance economic pragmatism with geopolitical considerations will be crucial in shaping their long-term economic and diplomatic trajectories. As we navigate these transformative times, your insights and perspectives are invaluable. Will Canada successfully reset its relations with China? Will the UK see more Chinese factories on its soil? Share your views in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. By understanding the intricacies of these strategic maneuvers, we can better anticipate the future of global trade and economic relations. The decisions made today will shape the economic landscapes of tomorrow, making it imperative for policymakers and stakeholders to carefully consider their strategies and actions. Multilateral organizations, like the World Trade Organization WTO, will play a critical role in mediating trade disputes and facilitating international trade. As Canada and the UK navigate their new trade relationships, the role of these organizations in ensuring fair and stable trade practices will be crucial. Beyond trade, technological and innovation partnerships will be key areas of focus. Canada and the UK can leverage Chinese advancements in technology and green energy to drive their own innovation agendas. Collaborative research and development initiatives could lead to breakthroughs in areas like AI, renewable energy, and electric mobility. Italy's Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney is on an official visit to China, aiming to reset relations. Why? Well, fears of a trade war with the European Union have been looming, but there's also a strong interest in attracting Chinese investment, especially in auto manufacturing. Italy and China have a history of economic and diplomatic engagement, but the landscape has been shifting. With global tensions and evolving economic strategies, this visit marks a significant effort to strengthen ties. Maloney and Chinese Premier Lai Kong signed the comprehensive three-year action plan. The plan focuses on implementing existing agreements between the two nations, experimenting with new ways to collaborate across various sectors, and includes an industrial collaboration memorandum that highlights electric vehicles and renewable energy, areas where China has been at the technological forefront. Notably, Stellantis, the automaker that includes Italy's Fiat, has teamed up with Chinese electric car startup Leap Motor to sell EVs in Europe. The focus on EVs and renewable energy is particularly noteworthy as China has made significant advancements in these fields and Italy is looking to leverage this expertise. Italy's relationship with China has had its ups and downs. While Italy dropped out of China's Belt and Road Initiative, they still want robust economic ties. It's a delicate balancing act. The EU-China trade tensions add urgency to resetting relations, and Italy seeks Chinese investment, especially in the auto sector. The potential for Chinese investment in Italy's auto industry is a significant motivator. Both countries see opportunities in technology and industrial cooperation. Premier Lai Kong assured Italian and Chinese business leaders that China's economic transformation will create demand for high-quality products, and foreign companies will receive the same treatment as Chinese ones. He emphasized the importance of a transparent business environment. Lai Kong's pledge is a promising sign for foreign investors. Equal treatment and a predictable environment can foster trust and encourage more collaborative ventures. This three-year action plan holds strategic significance beyond just Italy and China. It can influence broader EU-China relations and set a precedent for other countries seeking to navigate complex international dynamics. As the EU grapples with its own stance towards China, Italy's approach might offer valuable insights into balancing national interests with regional and global considerations. The emphasis on EVs and renewable energy isn't just about trade. It's about leading the charge in technological innovation and sustainability. Italy can benefit from China's advanced tech, while China gains access to European markets and expertise. Of course, this path isn't without challenges. Navigating geopolitical tensions, ensuring mutual benefits, and maintaining a fair business environment are critical. However, the opportunities for economic growth, technological advancement, and stronger diplomatic ties are immense. As Maloney wraps up her five-day visit, we're left with optimism. Italy and China are charting a new course, one that balances trade interests, cooperation, and mutual respect. The cultural and historical ties between Italy and China add another layer to this relationship. As we look ahead, the potential for deeper collaboration in various fields is exciting. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Until next time, 
Stay curious and informed.